The FBI just finished up giving an update on their investigation into the Trump assassination attempt. And they say they still have not determined really the overall meaning for the shooting. We know the motive was to kill. But was there anything behind that? They also revealed the former president will sit down for a formal victim interview at some point. We don't have a date or a time on that yet. Fox News has now obtained some text messages from local law enforcement that were given and sent out the day of the assassination attempt on our nation's 45th president. They seem to show the suspect was spotted much earlier than officials previously told us. Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley has a copy of the local snipers group chat and forwarded it out. Look at this. At 426, one of the snipers texted, Someone followed our lead and snuck in and parked by our cars, just so you know. I'm just letting you know because you see me go out with my rifle and put it on my car so he knows you guys are up there. Then at 5.38 p.m., a sniper sent a photo of the gunman lurking around the agent's building, or the AGR building, rather, and texted, I did see him with a rangefinder looking towards stage, FYI. If you want to notify SS, meaning Secret Service, snipers to look out, I lost sight of him. Now, that person, as I understand it, was on a job shift. He was handing over. And I want to double check with my team because that's what I had in my breakdown. In focus now, retired FBI agent Bobby Chacon. So you have one guy leaving, and he's kind of giving a detail of, yeah, I saw him too, and he had a rangefinder. This was so much before 6-11 when the president was shot. They had plenty of time not to put Trump up on that stage. This gets worse day by day. Why is it happening this way? Uh, you know what? <clears throat> those of us have worked these special events, Harrison, thanks for having me. It, it, it's astounding. I mean, the, if you read those text messages, the lack of urgency is, is, is incredible. Right? If you want to notify Secret Service snipers, like, like it's a casual thing, you've got a guy with a rangefinder. You've got a presidential candidate about to take the stage. There should have been much more urgency, and there should have been a plan in place to deal with contingencies like these. <clears throat> I've put plans together for events like the Olympics and the Oscars and things like that. You, you have contingencies, and everything is spelled out exactly what should happen if any of those contingencies take place. If you've got a guy inside your perimeter with a rangefinder, I mean, you have to take immediate action to address that potential threat. And the lack of urgency here on all involved is absolutely incredible. Well, this goes deeper. One of the local SWAT police officers shared how the U.S. Secret Service also, well, had a lot less to do with what was going on in terms of communications than we thought. We were supposed to get a face-to-face -face briefing with the Secret Service snipers um, whenever they arrived, and that never happened. So I think that that was probably a pivotal point where I started thinking things were wrong because... That never happened, and we had no communication with the Secret Service. You had no communication with the Secret Service at all on that Saturday? Not until after the shooting. Not until after the shooting, when everything was over. But they had time to text message back and forth and change shifts and be nonchalant about what they were saying. That was critically important. The U.S. Secret Service responded this way, because, of course, that's a huge accusation when the SWAT team said, you didn't call us or communicate before the president got shot. So here's the Secret Service on the record today. As it relates to communications on that day, we are committed to better understanding what happened before and during and after the assassination attempt of former President Trump to ensure that never happens again. That includes complete cooperation with Congress, the FBI, and other relevant investigations. Bobby, they didn't deny it. They didn't deny that they didn't do their jobs and communicate with the SWAT team, and possibly others on the ground. Look, we want to think great things about people who have great responsibility. What do you think? It's, it's inexcusable. I mean, look, every, every field officer of the FBI has a big, one of these big million-dollar command posts. When we have these events, we invite the LAPD. For example, when I was in Los Angeles, the L.A. sheriff, we're all sitting side by side in these command posts, and we would dedicate a guy to sit in their command post. So we're right next to each other. The communication is instant, and, and it's effective. So for these people not to even brief in person on the morning of the rally is unheard of. I've done these events. You, you, you brief, you plan, and then you brief again, and you meet constantly throughout the day. And you have a command post where all the communication goes in <clears throat> so that they can co coordinate 
and then action can be taken almost immediately. The fact that this was done so nonchalantly, yeah. I mean, it, it's absolutely astounding to those of us who've worked special events. Yeah, I mean, it's like they don't own a shift all caps button. I don't know if they use their emojis in the Secret Service, but put in all caps. There's a guy, yeah, I see the same guy you're talking about with the with the rifle and, and the range fire, you know, and I'm leaving this post to hand it off and I want to make you aware. Put it in all caps if you have to, real quickly. Paula Bay, Absolutely. The Absolutely, new... Harris. And hold the protectee. Don't let him take the stage. Exactly. So we're hearing Paula Bate is the FBI deputy director. We know that the special agent in charge is Kevin Rojack. They are drilling down on this. Any quick <clears throat> thoughts about the FBI? Yeah, I mean, they've got to be quick. <clears throat> they've got to be transparent. I mean, it's two separate investigations, right? The FBI is investigating the shooter. They've got to see what his motivations are. I know it's more difficult in this case because he wasn't very active on social media. So they've got to figure it out. And the Secret Service has to figure out the sa safety going down the road. We're in this home stretch of a very contentious presidential election. There's going to be more rallies. And let's remember, a man lost his life exercising his right to be part of the political process and one of his candidates. That cannot happen in this country. Yeah. I'm much more uh, concerned about the second lane of their responsibilities, making sure it doesn't happen again and keeping safety, rather than knowing what the dead shooter had really behind his plans that were to kill. Like, that's important, I guess, Absolutely. for history. But we got to keep people alive now mainly the people who lead our country. Uh, Bobby Chacon, thank you. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.